Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for an opportunity to study a portion of your word. We pray that the things that are said this evening will be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. But each and every one of us that can grow spiritually and grow in your word. Be with me. I recall the things that I've studied. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, man, anybody know what we were talking about? I know you had Calvin come through, Sean come through. Uh, Brother Cook did an awesome job putting these brothers together. I got them closing it out for the summer. Is that right? I'm not sure who's up next. But um, so the next two Wednesdays, including this Wednesday, um, we'll be studying Samson, Judges 14 through 16. And we're going to use James as the encourager. All right. Then, I'm sorry. The homework, sir. That's right. Homework, sir. I appreciate you all saying. Did you all do your homework? No, I'm not a little late. Well, at least you all being honest. Right. Work on the brother. Yeah, work on the brother. Woo -wee. All right. It's going to be a long evening. Long evening. I need you all. Uh, so, yeah, some of you are studying. Am I clicking here? Let's see. Oh, it means oh, no, there. there you go. All right. So, just a recap. We, um, um, already went through Judges. We're going to hit Judges 15 and James what? One. All right. We're going to highlight Samson's behavior. Cross went James 1. And uh, Brother Cook gave us a topic of strengthening the congregation. Kind of did a little twist of strengthening the Samsonites. Anybody remember what a Samsonite is? Strong in the flesh and weak in the spirit. All right. We need some more participation. <laughs> All right. Um, matter of fact, this is going to be in James uh, Judges 15. So I'm going to talk about this a little bit. All right. So let's go ahead and do a quick recap. We, we read in James 14 how he's prideful, lustful, boastful. Um, disrespectful to his parents. Uh, selfish, only thinks of himself, and vengeful. We're going to see that later here in the text. Um, and then we started with James 1 on the last time we met. Um, definitely want to apologize for any distract. I feel I seem distracted up here. I definitely want to apologize for that. Uh, looking at me like I'm crazy. See, if I'm a little slow, I'm a little slow today. <laughs> uh, my advisor. Uh, some of y'all know I'm working on dissertation and we're going to algorithm my advisor is drilling me. So, um, matter of fact, I'm not going to be the only one that seems slow today. I'm going to test you. I'm going to give you a little brain teaser. Y'all going like, what does that have to do with the Bible? Give you a little brain teaser. So if I write some code and it says this, what, what is it going to print out if I execute it? Let's see if you write. Okay, okay, sis. Hello, brothers and sisters. Do I have a laser pointer? A laser pointer back there? No. All right. You all right? Okay. Some, some scholars here. Does anybody know any uh, do programming? You know the program? Okay. There's only one here. Nobody can be the side. Okay. Yes. Okay. You can program. You know about computer science? You know? A little? Okay. Okay. So uh, help them out a little bit, okay? Help them out a little bit. Like I said, I'm not going to be slow today. You know, like I said, I'm a little distracted and slow. My advisor, my advisor is getting on me, put out a paper and do algorithm, but I'm not going to put slow today. So what about this one? With no errors. With no errors. Okay. So Sean's gonna help you. What about this? If I print, hello brother and sister, you already know that. What if I hit another print sign? What is that gonna say? So what y'all think gonna say? Welcome. Really? It's okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, you all kind of scholars here. All right, all right. Hello, brothers and sisters, welcome to Bible study. Good job. No errors. No errors. Right. Okay, it is. It is. <laughs> Take. No other? No, that's a system. Yeah, you're right. Okay, thank you. I did not put that. That is correct. Thank you, brother. Thank you for correcting me. Uh, need some arithmetic. What about this? As I say, x equal 3, y equal 5. He said, what? Do you all agree with him? He said that with confidence. Everybody agree with him? Hey, okay, okay. All right. It says, hey, good job. Good job. Like I said, I'm not going to be slow today. How about this one? Oh, I can't What about this one? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I can't see that. Uh-oh. She done turned around. <laughs> she done turned around already. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, she, she done. She She. She. ain't trying to look. You look like two seconds, sister. 
Okay, we have zero. Anyone else? We have zero. You can't see it? Uh-oh. Anybody, anybody else? Somebody say zero. Anyone else? Seven. Seven? Seven. Oh, he said nothing. Say it with proud. Say it proud now. Seven. <laughs> all right, so, so, let, so let me throw you a lifeline. Y'all think, what does that have to do with the Bible? Let me throw you all a lifeline. So what it says, and it, this author wrote, it's a pretty good book, The Cornerstone of Our Faith. It's talking about James looking at the man in the mirror. So I'm going to throw you all a lifeline. It says, as Christians, we are to consider it pure joy whenever we face trials. Right? Amen. Amen. Because trials teach perseverance. Okay. Perseverance brings maturity, completeness. If we are lacking in anything, then we are to ask God in faith, who gives all good things. So did you all ask God in faith? Yeah, they, <laughs> I'm, saying, I'm saying, right? So we lacking. That's what I'm saying. If we, we're lacking in something. Why can't we just ask God for the answer? Right? Karen, why can't we just ask God for the answer? Right? That's why we got that's why we gotta study the scripture, right? The, the scripture's not gonna go through its osmosis, right? We gotta study the scripture. If you don't know something like this, this soul right here, you're gonna be looking like deer in the headlights, right? Go ahead and talk to us. You might want to say something. Did it go? <laughs> But I'm saying, if you say if you're taking a test, I know I pray before I take a test. I'm praying right now to get through this algorithm, right? I'm praying all the time. Lord, give me the strength. I need it, right? I mean, my, my wife, she's a scientist, a microbiologist. I, I tell, she talked to me about that stuff. I look like during the hell, like just like you all. I, um, yes, I, think I, I like I'm listening, right? I don't know what you're talking about. You know, I'm just being there, just just listening here, right? All right, so Brother Cook was right. Good job, Brother Cook. Good job. So that was good. You want to walk them through how, how, you, get, how you got to zero? Because somebody said seven. <laughs> you want to walk them through? That was good, Brother Cook. Go ahead. Right, right. Times, you're multiplying times P. So anything Nigga. times zero is zero. Well, how you know about the operands? I put the parentheses, trying to throw you off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. You want the deer on set? You want to explain the deer on set? Do you know what that is? The deer on set? Please excuse my deer on set. So, so uh, parentheses, equations, exponents, uh, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. That's right. Awesome. That's it. Good job. So I guess he called on the name of the Lord. Answer that. Good job, brother. Oh, there you go. Oh, okay, okay. He had he had it one up. So. Unfortunately for me, uh, this is the stuff I have to look at. Thousands of lines of code. You won't even see any numbers in there. This is what I have to look at and go through uh, when I'm going through uh, my algorithm. So let's just pray for me. I do call on the name of the Lord, by the way. <laughs> I need him. <laughs> I need him every hour. Every hour. All right. So let's go ahead and finish up with James, and then hopefully we can get into Judges. Would y'all like to bring these a little bit? Okay, it's okay, right? All right. All right, I'm overloaded. <laughs> what did you say, Brother Pat? <laughs> overloaded. So I wanted you all to be slow like me, right? I like I said, I'm distracted. Then I'm slow today. So I want you all to know what I do. I'm, I'm, okay. All right. Uh, James, servant of God. I uh, you know James, stepbrother of Jesus, um, written to the uh, 12 tribes and scattered abroad, and also to the Jewish Christians. Um, it says, count it on joy when you fall in diverse temptation. I want to get to a specific one. This one says, but let patience have her perfect work. I think, Carrie, you were talking about that one time, Wednesday. That ye may be perfect and entire and wanting nothing. Wanting nothing. Wanting nothing. Me and my wife have a little disagreement. We were talking about this. Nothing, nothing that we won't get a divorce. No. We're okay. Everything's okay. A little disagreement, right? So, I was out conference last week. Was it last week? Time's fine. So, I was out in the conference last week and this happened. I came back 
uh, off the plane, took the metro to the parking deck, and as I came, walked them. First, I couldn't find a car, then I found my car and saw this, right? See the window busted out. You see, uh, I'm about to show you. Look, look at the video. You see, they done, they did it. Look at that. They, 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 I don't know what they tried to do. See, that can't even put the key in this shit. Mind you, the alarm's going off. I can't even stop. I can't, you know, I have a key in my hand, but it's not doing anything. Uh, you see, brother, put, they, left, they left the new commerce book. You see, they didn't, they didn't, <laughs> you didn't even call it. I guess we, we had an opportunity to share the word, but they said they left the new commerce book. They just threw that on the floor, didn't they, brother? <laughs> so, so the scripture said, but let patience have a perfect word that ye may be perfect and tired wanting nothing. So I want a new car now. I'm trying to say, I need a new car, right? I mean, you know, the window's broken. The initial, you see the initial you know, pulled out on the floor, you know? And I want this, whoever did this, I want to catch them so they can pay my $500 deductible for insurance, right? So if I, so should I not want that? Is that, is that what the scripture's saying? I don't know. What does it say? What is it? He, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I don't think the scripture is saying that mm -hmm. we don't have desires mm -hmm, for mm -hmm, things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As long as our desires line up with what God desires okay. and in his time and in his way. Right. Okay. So okay. there's nothing wrong. First of all, you know, you have a family. So And you have a job and things you have places to go and places to be. And so there's nothing wrong with having the desire for something as long as it's what God wants in his timing, and it's not ill-gotten. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. And, and Brother Cook, you want to add to that? Okay. Thank you, sister. Oh. No, it's Brother Cook, Brother Cook. Oh, did you want to say something? And, and the word uh, want there, yes. just like in Psalm 23, 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The word want is synonymous with lack. Lack, got it. Yeah, lacking Thank nothing you. or I shall not lack. Anybody else? Okay, so it's okay to want in this case, right? So, so, so I should go ahead and get it, get a Tesla or something. So, how do you go? No, no? Since, oh, you ain't getting into that. <laughs> All right, no, but, but, but this is what my wife told me. If any like wisdom, let them ask God. So, my wife said, Go to God, pray, let's pray about it. They're giving to all men liberally, abrade it not, and it shall be given unto him. So, we'll see what happened to be continued, right? So, wow, you see me rolling, you know, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna pull up. <laughs> you see a shared card. <laughs> thank you, brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, all right. Uh, what are we doing? So, there was one other scripture that I wanted to go to. What did I? Let's see. What was it? All right, so. Oh, oh we have some questions. Yeah, great. So, these are the. How's it delay? Okay. So these are the questions that we should have studied. Okay. All right. So in James, what did James tell Jewish Christians that they need to do in order to clean up their act so they could save souls? It's a question. It's quiet. All right. So you all should get see the hint. James 121. Let's go ahead and go to that. Somebody read that. Let me get there. Let me get there. Let you. Oh, you already have. Okay. Okay. Let me um, go back to the question then. Go ahead, brother. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth mm -hmm. and evil that's so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. What's the difference between filth and evil? It's anonymous, right? Filth and evil. Get rid of. Okay, go, brother. Care. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> evil is uh, more ha has more to do with disobedience okay. than it has to do with uh, filth. Filth has more to do with impurity, mm, like in not being pure. Yeah, yeah. 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 So the other so the spirit. Okay, thank you, brother. Anybody else want to add to that? Okay, I like that. Thank you. Well, now we have a Bible study. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, all right. What'd you say, Sean? Oh, uh, raise your hand. Brother Quasi, raise your hand. I was going to say, all filthiness is evil, but all evil ain't filthiness. Okay. <laughs> all right. What is true or pure religion? Somebody get James 
20, 127, 1, verse 27. Raise your hand when you have it so they can bring you the mic. Thank you, sister. Sister Phil Hand. Thank you, sister. You missed the cold part. You, you, you do programming too, right? So did, kind of. Uh, it says to look after orphans and widows and their distress and keep oneself from being polluted by the word. Mm. The world, excuse me. So you got filth, evil, polluted. Mm. What's polluted? Thank you. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Okay. Defile. Okay. Polluted. Anyone else? Polluted? Contaminated. It's a good one. Next question. Man in the mirror. That's a song, isn't it? What does this statement mean to you with respect to being a Christian? I think 127, I put that on there wrong, by the way. So I should not say that. But what? Man in the mirror. I want to read a few comments here. So ignore that, James 21, by the way. Uh, when you're looking at the man in the mirror. So when you look at yeah, when you look into the mirror, do you see one who's growing to a spiritual point at which you can deal with trials and still maintain your joy as a child of God? Can you all do that? Are we working on it? That's a question. <laughs> I think that um, when I saw my car broken into... <laughs> was I supposed to say yes thank you Jesus oh, I can say, thank you Jesus I can get a new car maybe I, just, I can do that right <laughs> uh, you got to come in over here alright go ahead brother Peter. Uh same thing happened to me um, okay. years ago uh, it, was a, it was actually at a church meeting in the mm. southeast it was a church in southeast I, was uh, I forgot the name oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I forgot the name of the church of Christ it was a church of Christ in southeast and we went to the, the meeting huh Probably was, but uh, it was a while ago, and um, you know it was a wonderful time. Had a great time. Then we all went out. It was at night, obviously, and we went outside, and all of our cars were broken into. Mine was like, all of them. At least my was the only one. Yeah. You just asked me some company, but you yeah, all, all of them. Yeah, and, and, and I was looking, and, and my car looked just like that car. Wow, like, just like yours. They took they actually took the uh, dashboard apart. Right, that, that's what they tried to do. I think that's what yeah, they, tried to do. they actually took it apart. Right, and, and so. They didn't get anything, but, um, you know, it, it it caused me a lot of harm. Oh, so you saying that when you looked in the mirror, if you would have looked in the mirror at that point? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think I think what, you, what you're getting at and what the passage here is talking about is seeing ourselves for who we really are. Mm -hmm. Because the person who looks intently at the word... Right recognizes their lack. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that's what I'm about to read right now. You took the words right in my mouth. You got another comment? I'll go ahead, brother. Thank you, brother. Uh, and I'll just add, I think it's, it's also not, um, you know, I'm feeling pretty, pretty low today or I'm feeling pretty bad or I feel bad about myself or whatever, but really going deep and doing an, an inventory. Um, you know, sometimes when we go, we, you know, typically at, at communion, we'll, you know, we'll say the scripture about, you know, we should examine ourselves, you know, before we take this, uh, lest we, you know, eat and drink, uh, unworthy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And unworthy man, but destruction upon ourselves, something like that. Bring, you know, and, and, you know, I think it's, it's a call into, uh, not just, glance in the mirror and say, oh, well, well, that's Andrew in the mirror. But really, like, really look at the detail and look at the contrast and look at, um, you know, the progression or regression as well. Because a lot of times we just like, well, I'm here in the present mm -hmm. and, you know, we discount the progress we've made or we put our head in the sand and how far back we may have gone. Wow. Uh, depending on who we brought into our lives, mm -hmm. the different elements, the, the filthiness or evilness we brought into our lives. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a measurement. It mm -hmm. is an inventory of uh, in, in different areas, physically, uh, you know, what am I doing with my body, mm -hmm. uh, spiritually, uh, intellectually, 
you know, it's 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 multifaceted because as you look in that mirror, it's not you don't it's not just a body. There's a spirit there in that in that mirror. There is a mind. I mean, there's there's um, and there's a physical body. So there's there's multiple components uh, all at play. So it's just not just a quick glance, like okay, well, I'm alive, or you know, I'm in the church. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I made it to Wednesday night, or I made it to Sunday morning, but we had to go deeper. Right. So go oh, ahead, brother Sean. Why you, why are you getting the mic? Hey, dude, ooh, ooh. That me? Dude. Couldn't be. Couldn't be. That was me. Sorry, I'm talking too close. Um, do anyone have a physical way of tracking themselves? You mentioned measuring themselves, or how you measure it and keep the milestones, whether you. People like write in the diary or keep tabs physically. How do you measure? So how do you keep tabs? Like, this is where I was last year, and this is where I'm in this year. That's the question. Has anybody has anybody keeping tabs on themselves in a physical sense? Written? No, no, you keep them like. I don't have All right. So after Sean, okay. I was just gonna say. Also, a thing I would say, I would caution or say, be mindful of is. Don't grow weary in well-doing. By that, I mean maybe taking the scripture a little out of context to use it for my own selfish reasons here, but it's better to limp in the right way than run in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. I always think about a scene from this movie called uh, The Five Heartbeats. One of the kids is a preacher's kid, and he's always on about how he's not perfect, how he's not this. So eventually he just says, you know what, since I can't be perfect, and I'm just going to go head along the other direction. And that's something that I think mm -hmm. especially younger Christians can fall into. Speaking of five heartbeats, somebody said I look like Big Red on there. I, mean, I don't like Big Red. I don't see it. I don't like Big Red. I don't like, what am I say? I look like Big Red. Is, it here? is that what it is? Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> Brother, how can we have in the back? Okay, hold on. wasn't anything earth shattering or anything. You were asking if uh, we were tracking our things. I mean, uh, I had a Fitbit. I have a Garmin watch. Uh, you know, it's telling me what were you doing last year? Uh, even photos that you take of yourself or your kids or that sort of thing. Just looking back on that, you can say, oh, look at what I was doing. Maybe a pair of pants I outgrew or grew back into. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, this I was meaning from a spiritual standpoint, is how you track. I did want to say you were asking about man in the mirror yes. uh, and what that brings to you. I was thinking, so I've got one of those mirrors that you can, uh, that's got, got a magnifying thing in it. You have to be, you have to get in focus. So you have to uh, actually get your head in the right place, so to speak. Uh, you have to have it clean so that you can see what's in there. Your you eyes can't be. Index on that mirror. <laughs> yeah, your eyes can't be clouded. So all these things are sort of analog for. What you have to do if you're a Christian, uh, we've got a we've got a mirror. Uh, it usually unfolds. Sometimes people won't pick it up and steal it out of cars. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I have several on my phone now. Use the Bible, right? Right. So. But it is in that is that mirror in this case the Bible? <laughs> and and to piggyback what uh, Carrie said, said when you read the Word of God, you are looking in the mirror, and it would tell you what kind of person you are. Oh. Any comments? All right. What a, I had something else I wanted to say. I think one of the ones I wanted to... Oh, right here. Uh, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. For those who um, fall away in the body, have you... Have their behavior started changing? Or did just one day wake up and just fall away? You see, you see, a, you see a pattern, right? Less, less fellowship, right? And frequent fellowshipping with the, the saints, and frequent attendance to worship and Bible study. Going back to the man in the mirror, and we using Samson as a biblical example for Samsonites out there. Um, what would Samson see himself as if he's if you look in the mirror. Hmm? Remember, he was disrespectful to his parents. So we're gonna go get that girl. Uh, the way he went about seeking a Philistine woman. Um, he also 
Uh, you got a question? Wait, wait. Oh, cool. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Brian. You were asking about Samson. Yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd already sort of considered more things on the mirror theme. So, you ever been in a carnival and the crazy mirror yeah. that you can go to in there? Yeah. So, there's a lot of those out there. It's not just the Bible that you can read and that could be your mirror. There's a whole bunch of things. I think Samson was probably a good example of that. That crazy going, house. Uh, exactly. Crazy he was in the crazy house. He mm -hmm. was hanging out with all the wrong kind of people, but that was what he was measuring himself up by. Mm -hmm. So. I was going to say that Samson didn't have the luxury of having all the whole library of 66 books put mm -hmm. together in one mm -hmm. nice package like mm -hmm. we have it. So if he had that to look in, I believe it probably would have been a true mirror. He could have seen some of those things. But when I look at Samson, because of the things he had been blessed with, sometimes in the physical side of the right. world, uh, world, you can't see the forest for the trees. Mm -hmm. So sometimes people don't think they're not doing anything wrong because they don't think they're doing it. Wow. So in this Samson. Yes, yeah, so if he looked in a physical mirror, he may have. So this the point. Is this an excuse, you saying? No, I'm not saying it's an no, excuse. No. I'm saying that because there's the Lord would have yeah. given, provided something yeah. equivalent enough for there to be enough of a mirror yeah. as we're using the 66 yeah, yeah. books. Yeah. So that's what I think about that. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I'm i trying to think back to the story of Samson, and oh, sorry, obviously he was pretty unstable, like doing what he wanted, not listening, and then obviously he was betrayed, um, and then I think at that time, then he gets his eyes poked out, right? Mm -hmm. And then he like, so I think it was like, eventually he's come learning after he's really been beaten down, Yes, and sometimes that's what it takes for people, obviously, right. I mean... Um, but at least he, I think eventually he realized like, Hey, I'm not on the right path. And then I think he relied on the Lord at the end. Yes, and that's did. when he was able to push the, that's right. the, the column down. Yeah, yeah. And that was basically God, I believe, uh, uh putting judgment on all those people, well, like all like those it. people. But so we see, I mean, a lot of life, we know that none of us are perfect. Uh -oh. And this is a complete journey we're on. Right. From the time we become a Christian till when we die, we are on a journey to become more holy, like God is holy. It says, be holy as I am holy, but we're going to fail. But God wants us to return, right? He wants us to always to repent and know he's faithful and just forgive us our sins if we confess. And, um, I, I, and when I look at Samson, I'd look at this person that was like, yeah, that person that's not on the right path. Yeah. But by the end, I felt like mm -hmm. he finally got it. Yeah. So good for him. Yeah. <laughs> that's good for him. But I, I don't want to find out like that, though. I yeah. want to be alive. He had to lose his, he had to lose his sight to get his sight. <laughs> lose his sight, yeah. Sorry, he lose his sight to get his sight. Yep, yeah, that's what he said. All right. So let's go ahead. So I think we beat up James enough. <laughs> We've been through changes enough. Um, let's go and get to some of the Judges 14. No, 15, I'm sorry. Uh, if, it takes, if it gets there. Let's see. Oh, while we are going there, there were some things I wanted to discuss here. We talked about man in the mirror, examine ourselves. Oftentimes, we encounter our brothers and sisters uh, in, the, in the congregation. And when you encounter them, how many, how many times do you encounter a brother or sister at the building or in the grocery store, and they seem to can't wait to tell you of their latest contraction, catastrophe or misfortune? Do you have somebody who loves to watch the news? You watch negative news all the time. This, this, I can't imagine what... Hey, my, I can imagine what is going on, you know, I think mentally, who wants to watch negative stuff all day long. That got that way on you, right? I, 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 we got rid of YouTube. We only have YouTube TV, I should say. And um, because it's nothing but just negative stuff that makes the headlines. And why is that? It's supposed to be a teaching ground. That's what sells. Is that the ways of the world? Hmm. 
Also, um, I don't know what I want. Let me get another one. Let me see. Oh, here it is, right here. Am I still clicking? We get the judges, and then we can go. But I have one more. In that book I was talking about, it's pretty good. It said, the more you talk, the less you listen. The less you listen, the less you hear. That's what my wife tells me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think Samson was a hearer or a listener? No, you're not much of a Go ahead, brother. Uh, somebody said something. Go ahead. On the mic. Somebody get on the mic. Well, I get the judges. I said I didn't think Samson was much of a reader, even, <laughs> if, he, even if he'd had the 66. <laughs> there you go, Judges 15. All right. um, I don't think so either, based off the way he was just living his life, right? But I did have one more thing I wanted to do. Let's see. All right. What about controlling your tongue? We know Samson didn't control his tongue. He said whatever he wanted to say. Can you think of a brother or sister in here? who is an active and faithful member of the congregation, but no one wants to be around that person. Y'all stop looking at me. Come on now, stop looking at me. I know, yeah, I'm a nice guy, right? Stop looking at me. That's not me. <laughs> Got quiet on that one, right? I guess, I guess we all counter that. Okay, I'll leave that alone. All right, so Judges 15. All right, so can somebody read, please? Can I see it? Okay, good. All right. Reader, reader, reader. Thank you, Sean. It's 15 1. Yes, sir. And from the screen, but it came to pass within a while after, in the time of wheat harvest, that Samson visited his wife with a kid. And he said, I will go in to my wife into the chamber, but her father would not suffer him to go in. Ooh, do, we, do we know why? Missing in action, right? Why was he missing in action? Let's go back to say, uh, Judges 14. Mm, I got a sniffle here. Uh, Judges 14.20. One more reading. Judges 14.20. I'll read it. Yes, sir. Judges 14.20. And Samson's wife was given to his companion, who had been his best man. Mm. Ooh, they got a they got a movie called Best Best Man. What is it? Best something. The Best Man, right? I mean, that was a Samsonish. Oh, so cool. um, so you see, so he, he, Samson' wife was given to his companion. Uh, you, you read in Judges fifteen that, uh, but his, his the father, I guess his father in law, would not let him come in because his what his wife was given away, right? But. Remember what Samson did, right? He lost the bet. Action, reaction. Why he lose that bet? Because he came up with a, uh, what is it called? Uh, a riddle, right? Yeah, a riddle. See, his tongue got him in trouble, right? Came up with a riddle, lost the bet. He had to go kill uh, these people because they won the riddle. And because he was mad and sulking, he went back to what to his father's, right? And so he was away from his wife. And what did his father-in-law do? Action and reaction. We gotta watch what we do. And then we're gonna try to blame, you know, someone else. So let's go to But wait, there's more. <laughs> verse two. Verse two, that's right. Go ahead. Read verse two, bro. And her father said, I really thought that you utterly hated her. Mm. So I gave her to your companion. Is not her younger sister more beautiful than she? Mm. Please take her instead. He gave her away. They just walk like an old daughter's away. Action, reaction. I knew what Samson do. I read it. 15.3, and Samson said concerning them, now shall I be more blameless than the Philistine, though I do, though I do them a displeasure? Let's keep going. 
And Samson went and called 300 foxes. This is him acting out again, right? Not having his way. Mm -mm -mm. Samsonites. Strong in the flesh and what? Weak in spirit. Samson went out and caught 300 foxes and took firebrands and turned the tail into tail and put a firebrand in the midst between the two tails. And when he had set the brands on fire, he let them go into the standing of the corner of the Philistines and burnt both of the shocks and also the standing corn in the vineyard. This is going to have some consequences, right? Serious consequences. All because he ran his mouth. For, no, he went down and found a Philistine one. Right? Sometimes we got to look in that mirror we talked about, right? Mm. Then the Philistine said, who has done this? And they answered, Samson, son of the law of the Timnite, because he had taken his wife and given her to a companion. And the Philistines came up and killed the, 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 his, I guess his wife or ex-wife and his father-in-law with fire. So we see how your reaction has caused somebody else's death. Your reaction is called somebody else's death. So we got to watch what we do. Not only if you're not falling in line with God's word, you're not hurting yourself, you're hurting who? Your family, everyone else, everyone else around you. That's the scripture said, you got to bear one another's burden. Right? I don't know if I'm going to bear that burden. <laughs> and Samson said unto them, though ye have done this, yet will I avenge of you. Now he wants revenge of the revenge of the revenge, right? We're going to pray. And after that, thou will cease. Yeah. On and on we go. My goodness. And he smote them hip and thigh with a great slaughter. And he went down and dwelt in the top of the rock at Ethan. Ethan. Then the Philistines went up, pitched in Judah, and spread themselves in Leon. And the man of Judah said, Why are you? Why are ye come up against us? Now he called them a whole nation. And then they answered, To bind Samson, we um, to bind Samson are we come up to do to him as he had done to us. My goodness, he's getting everybody in trouble. All because he messed with this Philistine woman and made poor decisions afterwards. Then three thousand of men in Judah went to the top of the rock. Edom and said to Samson, Knowest thou not the Philistines of our rulers over us? What is this that they have done to us? And he said unto them, As they did unto me, so I have done unto you. I think it's bless you. Watch this. And when they said down, we are come, and when they said to him, We are come down to bind thee, that we may deliver thee unto the hands of the Philistines. And Samson said unto them, Swear unto me that ye will not fall upon me yourselves. In other words, get on me yourself. And they spake unto him, saying, No, but we will bind thee fast and deliver thee unto the, their hand. But surely we will not kill thee. And they will bound him with two new cords and brought him up from the rock. I think this is the part, right? And when they came unto Eli, I'm trying to get to the main part. Eli, the Philistines shouted against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and the cords that were on his arms became a flax that was burnt with fire. And his hands and his bands loose from off his hands. And uh oh, he found the jawbone of a donkey and put forth his hand and took it and slew thousands. A thousand men therewith. Question for you. Let me go back to my questions here. And these are the questions I sent you earlier today, so hopefully you have an answer for them. Where are my questions? Are what can we as Christians do? To avoid becoming acclimated to our pagan culture, the world, 
What can we do? What can we do to avoid becoming part of the world? Uh, one thing you just mentioned is we can cut association where possible. Like you mentioned, you don't have YouTube anymore. Yeah, that negative uh, news, right? Yeah, sometimes we put ourselves in harm's way yeah. by hobnobbing with them, and then we learn their ways. Yeah, what, what we feed ourselves, what we binge mm -hmm. watch on YouTube, right? We got to be careful. That stuff comes out. You get with Brother Carrie. Um, uh, sometimes we, you know, being in the world, mm -hmm. um, you can't avoid knowing what's going on in the world, but what you can do is, uh, continually read God's word Amen. to get a different picture mm -hmm. of reality mm -hmm. because we're being told every day we are, we are being discipled every day, whether you realize it or not. Amen. So you need to purposely be discipled by God's Amen. word. Okay. Amen. That's one of the reasons we read the Bible. I was, I was talking to my wife um, about the pronoun thing. He, she, they. So I guess now we're going to have to go to the Bible to define what the he and the she is. Because they're going to start taking it out of the books, right? You heard about that? That's why they're protesting in Montgomery County. Yeah, they're protesting because they want, they're going to want to put some of this, um, I'm going to say it nicely. Yeah, generic stuff to incorporate the LGBTQ, XYZ. No. Yeah, so we have to go to the Bible to define what a he is, what a man is, what a woman is, because they're going to pull this out of the, the books. Oh, I said, you got to, when, like our daughter, seven, eight. Well, she just turned the birthday. Eight. eight. Oh, thank you. Um, she may have to grow up saying they when it's only really a, a, what we call a female. And he, so it's, it's going to be a they now. So we, we don't even know when she say they. We don't know what you're talking about. He or she. Go ahead. Uh, to add to that, the thing that's the controversy is eliminating the word wife and husband. Or father and mother, that's what they want to eliminate. In addition to that, too. Yes. Yeah. They've been trying that for a while, but this yeah. whole it's, that's the thing. Big thing. Yeah. Yeah, yes, yes, that's correct. But it's pro now. Oh, oh, one, one second, one second. Hi. Jason Just take it. Thank you. I I I I think it's very important to try to memorize scripture because okay. when you are, uh, sometimes we don't have the Bible in front of us and something pops up, like you're talking about an issue that um, very much bothers me. And I just like, yeah, the, it, to me, I'm going to just see so many things in our world yes. that are becoming work. so anti-godly. It's almost appalling to me. And, <laughs> and so I immediately have to like, Come in my mind, get my scriptures, start rattling them in my head to keep my goal, to keep myself so that I don't, I got to always try to represent Christ. But on some of these issues, I don't even know how to, I just want to scream out. This is so against what God wants us to be doing. It is literally like he was saying, it's taking away, it's trying to dissolve the family, which is... 100%. Christ is the head, yes, the father, right. you know, is uh, after Christ, you know, and, and then the mother. It's trying to dissolve the family and uh, and confuse young children. And I'm like, we already got enough problems in the world. Why are we doing this? And um, I mean, I, so anyway, memorizing scripture is a huge one for me, just so I can have some defense to keep me in line. Right. <laughs> Feel the faith. Um, she, we work at the same place, Brother Wilson. So, like when you see the signature blocks, I'm scared to go into leadership. I'm re I really don't want to go into leadership. What our gender, like what our pronouns are. They haven't forced us to do that, but a lot of people are starting. Leadership is. Leadership has to do that now. Yeah, leadership. Like, I don't even, I don't even want to go into leadership. I don't know that my husband has, but because uh, he's up for a higher yeah. leadership, but I just. I see it and I'm like, oh, just 
really yeah. happy. I'm like, but they have not forced us, so I just don't not participating. Mm -hmm. You can throw my wife in here, but she said she worked on a committee where um, uh, the lady she's working with had to announce in front of everybody before they started the meeting that, what did she say? She, she, she defined herself as a they. Like, it had nothing to do with the meeting. Like, it was an introduction. That's how she introduced yeah. herself. Well, it was as a they. Not necessary. <laughs> yeah. But it had nothing to do with the meeting. So, so why are you doing it? Right. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting off. My time's coming. <laughs> we have one more, and then um, we're going to close that. Oh, yeah, I was going to say what we, you know, what we can do. You said, uh, in addition, I think memorizing the scripture, uh, and then uh, having. Um, I mean, for me, like I like to talk things out, and if I'm going, if I'm exposed to something, or if I, it's like if you see a, um, something tra tragic happening, like a bad car accident, mm -hmm. or uh, something violent, or whatever, like you got, you can't. Some things you just can't keep to yourself. You have to talk it out, right? Mm -hmm. So whether you are exp whether you even with sin, like if we, like with Samson, like I, I can see like a lot of internal dialogue, right? <laughs> I, I, pur I purpose to do this. I purpose to do that. Or it, it, there's no way it, it, it's got nobody in his circle. Right. Uh, the fellowship, uh, brother Ricky, brother Wilson, uh, nobody you know to to call. Hey man, is this a good idea? Should I be doing this? Or should I say this? Should I respond? Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the iron sharpens iron, the accountability. So sometimes we got to have, you know, in addition to memorizing, we have to have people that we can pick up the phone and call, text, yeah. send a pigeon, telegram something to say, hey, like, can you check? Here's what was going on in my mind. Right. I need you to help um, uh, check me on this, you know? And I think that's what we always had to call with the elders. And I appreciate that. Hey, you can call the elders anytime. You can talk to the preacher anytime. There's plenty of resources available, but we can't just... Uh, uh, just do it internal. We can't do it by ourselves, mm -hmm. and we have to just you know have you find an outlet, whatever it is, um, and, and and utilize it. Mm -hmm. and we have two. Just real quick, back, real quick, um, just to put a positive spin on it. Um, so you asked the question of you know how does the thing seeing the things of the world affect you? Um, mm -hmm. It's a reminder. It's a struggle actually on Wednesday nights with young children to um, bring them out. It, it messes up the whole go to bed schedule and all that. But it, it's important to have your kids immersed in you know, all their friends should be, you know, in church, Christian families, and just to have them every chance you can just to be around other kids that are learning and thinking the same way. Mm -hmm. So that it, so when I see that, it's a reminder of like, you know, this is tough, but we got to do this because this is really important. Man, encouraging us to, I thought you had a, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to make a comment about this topic. I think it's a very important topic. Um, I, I think that this just shows more than ever the pressure that young people are under trying to raise children. Um, the world is, Satan is being exceptionally successful right now uh, with the movement of the posts that we know that are accurate. So he's doing all of those things. So if the parents fail to realize that we are peculiar people, we're not a part of the world, and it is your responsibility as a parent to teach your children these absolutely monumental things, uh, it's, they're going to get it when they go into the world. But they ought to be able to come home and find a safe place to ask their parents, what about this and what about that? And you ought to be able to go into the Bible and show them the things that God said a long time ago. He made them male and female. That has not changed. And all I'm saying is that uh, my hat goes off to young parents right now because they are up against it and they really need to hold on to the word of God right now because uh, it's it's tough out here right now. Real it's tough. really, really tough. All right. And, and brother. Yeah, yeah, brother. So following on that a little bit, um, I think a lot of what seems to be happening is that we, we were brought up, at least as I recall, to maybe not question our parents too much, in the, at least initially, but if you have questions and you have ideas you can bring those up and you can discuss them and uh that that place to have that discussion is is that safe place right 
And if you take that outside the home, then you still can talk with someone reasonably about okay. things like what we're discussing here. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the questions that we're describing here, a lot of things that the kids want to ask are considered hate speech now. Mm -hmm. Just by asking the question, well, you, uh, and, and it's almost, well, I, I was thinking, in, how can I describe this? It's almost like trying to give a command to a rabid dog. Oh. There is no... There's no logic to what the animal is going to do, and this and it's a very animalistic kind of response. It's just a gut. I hate you because you're asking me a question and making me think about what it is the reason that I'm uh, in this this mindset that you should call me they, or that you have to accept what I am projecting at you to that you have to to echo back to me. That's what I want you to do, and that loss of reasonableness is where I get so frustrated with this, as you can probably hear in my voice, it's, it's impossible to talk with someone about, well, why is it that you feel that way? Oh, you hate me because and it's in my gut. I can tell that you hate me. And it's, it's a terrible place to be. It's, it you lose the ability to talk reasonably about this. So well, I'm not sure. Getting younger solutions. and younger. Huh. Yeah, indeed. indeed. Yeah. And uh, hold on to the mic, brother, so you can pray us out. So next week, we're going to close out. We're going to talk about a statement that's made here. It says, sin truly took Samson further than he wanted to go, kept him longer than he wanted to stay, and cost him more than he wanted to pay. All right, go ahead and close it out, brother. Spire has. Dear Lord, we are grateful that we have this place that we can come and discuss ideas and your word and the things that you would have us to understand from your son's example and from your uh, the, the things that you have inspired in the writers of the good book. Lord, we thank you so much that we're able to do this and that we can join together uh, without any kind of hate speech, but just with uh, the effort that we have to put forward to, uh, that we should put forward to speak with one another with kindness, to speak with others with kindness, to understand what it is that may be troubling someone else. We we appreciate that you have given us the ability to, uh, to discuss those things here and for us to come to some determination to uphold uh, or to uh, bolster e each other's spirits. So we thank you that we have this time tonight. We thank you for uh, the things that Palmer's bringing to us, the things that uh, are being discussed from all the folks in the class, that we are able to do that. And that most most of all, that we have your son as our example and our Savior. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Oh, thank you. Hi, I'm Ricky Cook, minister here at the Laurel Church of Christ. We hope you've enjoyed our video broadcast, and we'd love to have you with us in person as a special guest. Currently, we offer Bible classes for all ages on Sundays at 9.30 a.m., followed by our Sunday worship service at 10.30 a.m. Wednesday evenings, we have Bible class at 7 p.m. Please come and visit with our church family. We believe that you'll want to come back again. Have a question? Please reach out to our elders at elders at laurelchurch.net. We look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks, and God bless.